see this washing machine is full of water and it's actually taken a few days to fill up to that level that normally means that it could be two things that I am aware of firstly it could be the water inlet valve that could be passing slightly or dirty water could be running back into the machine if the drain is not set up correctly so with any washing machine you need to ensure that the pipe at the back is higher than the drum level that will stop any water from draining back into the machine because we know that this machine is set up correctly we know that that water is coming from a faulty water inlet valve so we're just going to close the door we'll put this on a 15 which is a spin and drain we'll switch the machine on and we'll just drain out the water from the bottom there that'll take 10 minutes so that's now finished we can now switch the machine off it's always difficult moving a washing machine because they are a lot heavier than a tumble dryer so I'm going to pull the tumble dryer out switch both machines off and then we can pull the washing machine forward and we can replace the inlet valve so that's the washing machine unplugged and then I'm going to move the washing machine forwards and like I said these are a lot heavier than a tumble dryer if we take a look at the pipe setup you can see that we've got a cold feed connected to the washing machine that is this pipe we've then got the drain pipe which is a lot higher than the drum so that is exactly how you need it I have seen some instances where the drain pipe has been connected to a spigot under the sink and the drain pipe has not been high enough and water has drained back into the machine so you do have to be aware of that happening another thing I should point out is that if you have a hot feed and it's not being used it should be switched off with the isolation valve and you should also put a cap on the end with a rubber washer in there just in case the valve is ever knocked and becomes open you do have to watch these because sometimes you think you've closed it and you haven't and as you can see that has just snapped right off there so I'm going to grab that with a pair of water pump pliers I did do a video about never trust a isolation valve a few years back because I did this once and got a bit wet so that is now at 90 degrees so that should be isolated correctly now that the water is isolated we need to remove this connector obviously there's going to be water in this pipe at mains pressure because that will be trapped in there so you just have to be aware of that it's a good idea to get a container ready and put that on the floor and then we'll just get some kitchen roll under there and we'll just carefully crack that open If you just give that a waggle should ensure that the machine is isolated correctly obviously if it wasn't the water will be spraying out of there now and it's a good idea to check the condition of the washer in there before you put it back also in the back of here there is actually a small filter and you should be able to pull that out you can see that that is quite clean but if you have a dirty water supply that will often get blocked with debris in the water we now just need to remove the top by removing these two screws the top on this machine is a bit difficult to get off because it clips into the fascia at the front there these lift up a bit and that will pull straight off like that obviously this part here is the water inlet valve so that's the bit that we just removed at the back that connects to that and this is just held in place on this machine with three screws now I have already taken the top off this because I needed to ensure that I got the correct inlet valve and I actually searched for the model 
of this exact washing machine and couldn't actually find one. So I just googled for hot point water inlet valve washing machine and I actually found the correct one and it cost about £10 delivered. So that's the replacement one and as you can see that is absolutely correct. It even has the correct colour coded connectors on there. So it's always a good idea to check that just before you take it out of the bag in case you need to send it back. And as you can see this one is complete with the seals and also it has the filter on the inside there. This is a relatively simple one because there's only two plugs and they are colour coded but some of these can have a few different solenoids on them so you do get more complicated ones. So if you're in any doubt at all it's a good idea to get a mobile phone and just take a picture of the wiring. I'd just like to point out that for some of these there will be a hose connected to it with a hose clip and you're going to need a pair of long nose pliers in order to get that off. This is a slightly different one because we just have the two inlet holes at the bottom there that go into this port which then leads to the dispenser tray. So when them solenoids are energised it will allow the water to go into the machine via the tray. So the first thing we need to do is disconnect the two wires. So we just need to press on that tab and disconnect them. So I'm pushing back the plastic tab there and just gently pulling up on the connector. I'm now going to remove the screw at the back there. And then I'm going to remove these two screws. And you will notice that I've got my hand underneath there and I'm actually holding that just in case it does decide to fall down into the machine. I should now be able to pull down on that and pull it away from the machine. And as you can see there is a little bit of water in there still. So I'll now take the new one And we just need to push that up from underneath and ensure it goes through the hole in the back there. And that simply pushes into position like so. We can now put the two screws back in the top there. And when we do this I'm making sure that the screw at the back there is aligned with the hole. So I'll just turn those two up. And then we'll just put the screw in the back there. And then we can just take the two connectors there and we can plug those back in. They will simply push in. take a look from this side you can see that the seals have pushed in there perfectly. So we can now put the lid back on. To get this back on we need to push it on from the back there, push it forward and then click it into the face shirt at the front there. We can then replace the two screws at the back. Can then take the water pipe and reconnect that. You should just need to tighten that finger tight. On some of these you may just need to use a pair of water pump pliers and just nip it up 
just to ensure that it doesn't leak. So we're just going to give all this a wipe down and ensure that it is completely dry before we de-isolate the water. I can then take the water pump pliers and we'll just crank that open. And you can hear the water moving, that is repressurizing the pipe. You can now check for leaks. I can plug the washing machine back in. And then once I've got it back into position, I will then switch it back on. Obviously I will get a new handle for the isolation valve at some point. So again, you just need to check that, make sure that it's not leaking. So I can now carefully push this back into position, ensuring that I don't trap any of the pipes or the cable. Can then switch the washing machine and the tumble dryer back on. And then I can carefully push the tumble dryer back. I hope you found this video useful. It is a very simple job on most machines and can be fixed very inexpensively.